All right. So hi, everyone. Thank you very much for coming in such a big number. Um, when I was pre preparing for the presentation from, you know, how to talk and everything. So what I heard is, you know, if you're stressed, don't think about that you are stressed. Think about that you're excited. So I hadn't been so excited, you know, for a long time. So, <laughs> so uh, thank you very much once again for coming. And the reason I wanted to talk about uh, security is because we come across day after day, you know, on websites that are with malware, basically, or, or that, are, that, they, that they are hacked. So I thought, you know, there are security talks on every WordCamp, and I, I wanted to raise awareness about, you know, the practices that will keep you uh, sleep tight at night, you know, that you will, you will be safer. But it has to start somewhere, and that somewhere is at the beginning. So that I want to raise awareness about being more proactive in protecting your website, not only building the website and that's it, but rather what can you do to make your website protected and and safe. Uh, there is saying that there are only two kinds of people: they are th those that are doing backups and that and those who will be doing backups. So I think this is similar situation with security and um, it works. It doesn't work. Oh, okay, yeah, this works. This work. So short info about me. I'm ex iOS developer running an agency now. So there is a, like a bit, a bit of a transition. Uh, we are on the market for 12 years and um, uh, I have also a podcast and after hours I run, re read books and my recent passion is Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. I saw a gentleman here with a Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu hoodie, so uh, I, I have to find that person uh, to talk. What we will talk about today, it, intro, that's done. We will talk about a little bit um, motives for, for hacking. So you have a, why would anyone want to hack your website? So we will talk about uh, those motives a little bit. Um, we will also talk about um, some infections that I can share with you. Um, what are the sources for, for those attacks? What are the reasons uh, it is even possible? And we will talk about um, also um, what are those practices that, um, mm, that I mentioned. Um, a little bit about OWASP, OWASP and what is it and we will recap. So what are the motives for hacking? And before we start, I would like you to raise hand. Uh, please raise hand if you have ever been hacked for or your laptop or your website. So I'm very curious. Uh, all right, so it's like fifty percent of the of the room, which is you know a little bit scary. So the other ones who didn't raise hand, you are probably in the queue or maybe not. <laughs> um, all right, so let's talk about motives for for hacking. So obviously that's financial gain. This is data theft and data now, data is money. So you can also merge those two with, uh, you can sell the data later on. Malware distribution, because you have to have, you know, that network that can um, deploy malware to your website that will, you know, make the website um, infected, but also, you know, the compute power to do these things. Hacktivism, so you don't like someone, so you will hack your their website. Uh, cyber warfare, and this is very prominent when war in Ukraine started, you could see anonymous uh, group hacking this government website, that government website. So this is also falling into hacktivism, but also cyber mm, warfare a little bit. And, and governments doing this with uh, famous um, mm, plants in Iran uh, breaking because of the, of the hacks on hardware on, um, on, on, on plants. Um, reputation and challenge. Uh, so uh, I can do this, so so I will. Um, and espionage. This is not probably applicable to our um, our case. And personal vendettas. Be, please, please be kind to your colleagues. Um, now uh, let's talk about um, first four because other ones are not very applicable probably to 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 our group. Um, Let's talk about financial, financial uh, gain, data theft, and malware distribution. Um, what are the ways you can um, you can gain you, you, you can gain financially from um, attacking a website? 
first group that is most, um, let's say, on on the spot are all of the e-commerce platforms because there is money going through the e-commerce platform. There is a lot of AdWords uh, that are di driving traffic. So there is a, there are a lot of customers on those websites and wherever there is money involved, this is this is like a honeypot. So you can think about credit card skimming and these kinds of hackers group are called in as a group mage card. So it comes from Magento. Um, uh, this was originally um, initiated through Magento and is like spreading to another e-commerce platform. So this, this software that lets you um, hijack credit card number and then you can either sell those credit card numbers or you can use them to, you know, to do this on your own. Also ad fraud, which means you have ads for stuff that is, you know, scam and then that financial gain is coming from the scam product that you uh, that you purchase. So in fact, the website put some fake banners and someone is buying, you know, US visas uh, <laughs> and, and you gain you gain financially. Um, crypto jacking, so injecting, for example, JavaScript uh, miners on your website. So whenever someone enters your website, JavaScript code runs on your laptop, your uh, CPU goes bzzz, <laughs> and you are mining Bitcoin for someone or any other currency. So it's like offloading C uh, compute power to your local machine so that someone is benefiting from that. It's like distributed network um, through, through those machines. And this is not infection of your laptop. It's just you are, you are uh, renting your CPU for someone else's benefit. Phishing uh, campaigns, which means you can share data that will be used later on to hack you. Banking is a very prominent example in this, but it doesn't mean if you enter a website, regular WordPress website, you know, company website, you can be presented a um, phishing page or your website can be a source, um, like a hosting for those pages to be presented somewhere else. So again, it's like overtaking infrastructure for, a, um, how to put it, like for um, for other benefits, like for example, displaying those phishing um, pages. Fake product listings. So again, you are buying something that will never never arrive. SEO spam, you are, when you are infected, for example, there are links and backlinks directing to other websites and you are losing your reputation for someone else, gain reputation of your website. So if you have high ranking, good reputation of the, of the website, that is stolen from you, you will lose your reputation and someone else will do this. It's like, you know, black SEO, but even more black than, than regular black SEO. Um, payment gateway manipulation. So you can be hacked and the details for the, like the money can be offloaded to someone else. So it's not only uh, like a credit card theft, the payment can be manipulated even if it is a bank transfer, to arrive somewhere else, not to the recipient you are thinking uh, will will get that, but to someone else in a hacker in this way in, in this way. Cookie stuffing, and this is interesting because if you it's it's very common as common as SEO um, manipulation. When the website is hacked, you click a link, and then there is like six seven pages opened in a cascade, and every load uh, creates a cookie and those cookies are um, valuable for hackers or bad people because they can be assigned to a purchase or affiliation or whatever so there is some some benefit in doing this because with a mass scale you you gain massively in in um uh, in this kind of activities exploits so this is again gaining a network of of infected machines which host malicious code that can be then later uh, sent mm, or injected somewhere. So this is part of the automation when bots are scanning the websites, find vulnerabilities, and the code has to be deployed from somewhere. So the infection has to be, you know, it's associated with a code. And this is like hosting uh, of code that is injected into, into a website. Now, um, I will show a couple of examples of websites that we came across and uh, you know when when taking over 
um, of websites of our clients. And uh, first case, it's a big government organization. This is very big government organization. And the situation we, we had with them is that uh, they were um, infected at some point. They have 15 websites. So that organization has, has different 15 different websites for different departments or different initiatives. And they were all hosted on AWS LightSail server, which is important because LightSail in their configuration didn't have any separation between those websites. What happens is if you have a website on a server that, uh, that has no separation between those websites, if you have more than one, <laughs> you will have to clean all of them. So it, it's, it's like you have a basket of eggs and you lose that basket <laughs> and all of the eggs are, 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 are cracked. So um, how was it possible? There was no separation of, of, of domains uh, of, of websites. We don't know what was the original attack vector, but within 15 WordPress websites, none of them being uh, updated on a regular basis, uh, done by myriads of agencies uh, across the years, there is like no way of knowing who is the culprit, right? But at the end of the day, we have to um, manage the mess. And um, wh what's interesting also is that they were not infected to gain financially. The, the, the website got deleted over and over. So the website went down, there's no website. Okay, what, what do we do? We restore from backup, right? And we cleaned all of the, those websites manually. It's a pain. It's a huge pain uh, to <laughs> uh, to clean them uh, if if they are you know different versions. There 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 is a bit, the big chaos there. And um, we scanned them with two scanners. We put them back, and they got infected again. So we clearly either missed something, or there is the the hole is deeper down on the uh, on the on the um, wordpress let's say level or there is something very custom on one of those 15 websites that lets those attackers enter or someone at the government organization is hacked and you know uh, hackers know their login details and go as admins over and over again even though we for example change password so what we are what are we doing right now is we are moving them to a server with a, a domain separation so that we can pinpoint which website is letting the hackers into their uh, on premises let's say uh, into the server so that we can uh, find the root cause for that N no other way around this uh below you can see a code that is you know if you see th something like this, this is certainly malicious because it goes to the top of the of the server infrastructure and 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 searches for index and wp-config files so that you can get access to um uh to the uh, you know to the settings of of WordPress website and you can in fact that um other websites right so you crawl all of the um, folder tree being in one website looking for other websites, right? So you you have a look like a helicopter view on the whole uh, website structure. Case number two, it's an e-commerce platform. Mm, we are taking over that e-commerce platform. Um, update policies on demand, which is very <laughs> rising, uh, rising an alarm, but you know, we can't do anything about it. It's, you know, client decision and um, we are in a situation when the last update was done four months ago. And what happens, you know, what, how did that infection started? Um, there is a vulnerable plugin uh, installed in this website. Uh, WordFence and PatchStack releases a memo on their website that there is a vulnerability in that plugin, and this is fixed. So dear WordPress community, please update your vulnerable plugin. This is a patch. Or, or you know, this is this is fixed. Please, please do this. What happens? Three days later, we, the, the the website got infected through that exact plugin. Now, is the web is the uh, patch stack or WordPress to blame? Obviously not. They the way they do this um, is they contact privately the um, plugin makers. They say to them, there is a vulnerability. You have to fix it. We are waiting for you to fix. 
plugin maker fix the plugin it's officially available for for updates it's available for auto updates as well so wordfence and uh, patchtack are releasing the memo so that everyone goes and updates the plugin now if the client doesn't update and hackers know about this you can uh, uh, make a diff on the code you know exactly where is the problem and you know how to hack that website right so it's like a double edged sword um all of those um security updates are double edged sword because you know then how to hack a website ha on that version right so um you have to be aware that uh, you have to be updating the plugins as soon as possible before those releases um are are um are released because otherwise it's like uh alarm on a loudspeaker you know <laughs> there is a bug right there is a bug um um, what happened also that went unnoticed is that the uh, no nothing happened. The, cast the, the hacker got access to the website and created WordFence admin user, which is most funny because WordFence is a very known, you know, word in 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 uh, in, in WordPress world and can got unnoticed. Um, we have cleaned the account and and the client decided to do updates um, more often on a regular basis. Oh, sorry, this is old presentation, or I didn't update the, the title, sorry. So another uh, example is very interesting because this is a little bit different. This is all also a very known brand and they are on a VPS server. So again, a lot of you can do if you get access. Um, the website gets very, you know, there is a lot of pop-ups with those visas, for example, buy US visa for, I don't know, $150, right? It's a scam for sure. and it's. A big website, rather old, a lot of custom code. Um, and what hacker gained is uh, they added SSH key uh, keys to the server. So so they, they had open connections to, to the to the bare metal machine, right? Um, they could do everything with the website. Um, they had a cron job that was adding code. Uh, if, the, if, if the code was removed, it was added through a, a regular cron job. And they had also admin uh, users. So there were like many open vectors of attack for that particular website. If the website is clean, then there is SSH connection. If if this doesn't happen, then there is cron job uh, fixing that. So on and on. And we cleaned the code. We have reset the passwords for all of the users. We have removed people from old people, all the accounts from the organization. We even switched the platform because we were thinking maybe the, you know it was like a sloppy server hosting um, company. We switched to a uh, um, dedicated WordPress um, platform, and there was a comeback, right? So what happened? We did uh, everything, and and there is a comeback, right? What happened? There was a custom code written for a spe like special uh, functionality that was taking user input which was unsanitized. And it was clear SQL injection and the end of the day <laughs> that was uh, allowing the hacker to get fourth way, uh, uh, in a fourth way to back to the server. Um, what are the sources of those attacks? Now, Patchstack reported, uh, published a big report on 2023 and they are saying that 97% of all uh, vulnerabilities are coming from plugins. Now, there is also Thomas Reef, who also published a 2023 report saying um, that stolen session cookies were root cause for 60% of attacks or incidents. Now, what does it tell you exactly? Should you patch the plugins? Should you do the updates? You know why? Because there is still 60% of the attacks that will happen through stolen sessions. Is it the same thing? It's not. So is 40% of non-stolen session incidents out of which 97% were attacks through plugins? Not necessarily. What patch stack reports are the holes. So holes happen in the plugins. But does this mean attacks, all of the attacks are coming through those holes? No. It's I, I was in shock when I was reading the, uh, reading this and and that report on stolen session cookies was uh, I think it's like from two months ago. So what happens is that both are true. 
patch stack reports, it's like this guy sitting on a goal in, in that safe and doesn't see the safe is taken with, out of the building with, with him inside, right? Patch stack analyzes uh, the, the source code and reports on the source code. What patch stack doesn't have access to is the numbers of, uh, of incidents, because uh, if you have access to the server, you can manipulate the data and, and, and WordPress or, or patch stack doesn't, doesn't see this. What uh, uh, Thomas Reef is reporting is based on the out outcomes, on the incidents, on the um, mm, on the hacks, because he uh, he has a company called We Watch Your Website, and they are running code on the server level, monitoring the website. So they see uh, logs, and they are and they are um, uh, report reporting based on that. And what happens is they are seeing a logs, they are seeing a lot of logs with the data, uh, with a login details. So those login details should, are coming from those machines. So what you can do is protect your sessions. If you are an admin, what you can do is to log out from uh, from admin session as, as often as possible. If there is no session, there is no, uh, no hijacking. Now, if you are, uh, if you, if your sessions are leaked, it means maybe you have a info stealer or, or malware on your computer. So the first thing you should be protecting is your own premise. Your laptop, not using uh, open uh, networks, uh, basic stuff, the stuff that we are telling our grandmothers, grandfathers, mothers, fathers, and so on, that you should be protecting your own PCs. So this is very important because this is not on our radar as developers that Okay, we have to protect the websites. We have to, you know, sanitize SQLs and everything. But then you have your own PCs, and if someone get, gets access to your computer as a developer, there is a high chance. There is number of websites, not only one website, but there are tons of websites you, we've been building for our clients, for example. And we have all of those uh, websites logged in uh, as admins because we were developing those websites, right? So this is this is very overlooked. Um, thing that we have to protect our own first, like in an airplane, you have to protect our own, you, you put on mask first and then on your child because someone has to take care of the child later on. How to prevent that and what to do? Because I have covered your own computer, but can we just, you know, uh, not do anything about our websites, like plugins don't update it? No, we, we can't because this is so easy to get it infected. So you have to be protected. And, and that uh, there was a case like Patchstack um, reported that vulnerability and our website was infected three days later. So if you don't update your plugins, you are, it's guaranteed that you will get hacked, but it's not enough. That's why you have to prote protect your own environment too. Now, um, what to do to protect that website part? Um, you have to update websites as often as possible and maybe even uh, turn on auto updates if if they are not breaking your website because there is be between zero day vulnerability and uh, and patch there is a couple of days and then when the release goes out you, you have to be like already updated um, you have to do backups as well because at some point the infection was um, um, was done, but you have to have to revert somewhere. And you have to the, do the updates on an external machine. Now, if you go to Google and uh, Google Unisuper, you will see that 125 billion US dollars company got wiped out by accident on Google End. And this is from two weeks ago. 125 billion dollar company got accidentally deleted from Google Cloud because of an error. Unheard of. And what the reason, it's an Australian pension fund. So grandmothers and grandparents, you know, didn't have access for a week to, to, their, uh, to their platform, to their banking platform, in fact. They were, uh, they had backup on an external, uh, from an external provider. It took seven days to restore from an external provider, even though they were based on two separate locations. I have to run. You have to uh, you have to protect your also your accounts now. Um, you can use um, you can't use shared uh, accounts because if someone gets infected, you don't know who who that was, and this is very common. 
What else is very important? Uh, protecting REST API. This is a real use case. Uh, go to uh, uh, JSON API and test a couple of your clients' websites because there are usernames. Most of the time, they are usernames user leaking. And if you, if there is an admin, uh, that's that's probably really an admin. And also the login screen, if it confirms the username, it's not a bad practice. There is zero reason someone should know that there is an admin account and that this admin account is a correct admin name. Um, how to treat your passwords, like Snowden on that uh, famous movie, um, uh, typing the password. Uh, no one could see the password. Now you can discuss if it is really uh, impossible to see the password because there are some techniques I heard that it's possible to, to read that password. And OWASP. Um, OWASP is a good starting point for you to have a, like a helicopter view to to know uh, what's going on. There is a 2017 and 2021 version. There is an update coming in 2024. So um, it will get updated, but I wanted to tell you what is OWASP. And OWASP is the 10 most common areas that are um, problematic and from where they are the, the, the problems in security are coming. Let's take insecure design. And if you go to OWASP page, and go, for example, to insecure design, there are an examples that will um, explain uh, how you can think about that bad, de bad design, unsecure design. And for example, you can uh, have um, a design in which you restore password by questions and answers. And this is, this is forbidden a practice from OS perspective. And guess what? Do you know any most famous uh, questions and answers uh, password recovery website? Google's. So if you are on the iCloud, there is that uh, answers uh, you can give to restore your password, which is forbidden by OWASP. There is um, there, there are also other examples. I have to run now, sorry. Uh, and even OWASP is not, um, um, uh, can get hacked. And it was uh, published on 1st of April, and this is no joke. They got hacked on their old wiki page, which also stored um, OWASP contributors' um, personal data. It's, you know, GDPR breach. We are in Europe, and, and this is a problem because the, they got hacked and they had to, you know, and they are security people. So everyone <laughs> at some point will get hacked. To recap, your website is always a target. If you are asking why should one, why should anyone uh, hack my website, you should be asking why anyone shouldn't be hacking your website. You are certainly on a target. As a, you are a target because you have compute power to 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 be taken um, advantage of, and this is all automated. So there is no human going um, most of the time um, after you. Um, you have to be doing updates as often as possible. And uh, there are certain measures I covered that uh, you should be protecting yourself and your own machine. Um, and if you want to start somewhere, start at OWASP uh, to get some kind of uh, you know footing about uh, what is what is security in your own environment. Let's say. Thank you very much. There is a survey. You can scan, scan the code. There are three questions. Please roast me. I would like to hear your feedback. Um, yeah.